So the first game in the June series between New Zealand and France has come to a close. New Zealand running out 52 points to 11 winners. Uh, definitely what you can call a game of two halves, especially when you consider only two tries in the first half and a lot in the second half. But um, the game itself, a uh, pretty nice night in Auckland. It looked like pretty good weather, so uh, that, that boded pretty well for, for a good game. Uh, All Blacks started kind of tentatively doing some kicks through from Bowden, um, trying to expose some kind of space uh, on the French lines. The French were offloading lots uh, early on, and that was causing kind of a bit of unease in the All Black defenders. And the French struck early on. It was Grosso who, who got a try from an intercept, but it was the All Blacks trying to run the ball from their own 22. So, uh, yeah, a good, a good thing for the match, obviously, was for the French to score first. Just because if the All Blacks go ahead and you know, get 21 points to nil up, then it's, uh, I guess for the most part, going to be a foregone conclusion that they'll just keep going away with it. But the fact that the French went out in front just added a bit of spice to the game. Um, so that was good. Uh, also, Aaron Smith um, got penalized, well, March 10 anyway, uh, early on after being penalized for, um, for dissent, talking back to the ref. Uh, in Super Rugby, we see a lot of that, especially from the number nines, talking back to the refs. This guy was having none of it and um, marched him 10. Uh, you know, I, I, it cost the All Blacks three points, and I don't usually have a problem with it, so I thought that was fine. Um, but yeah, it was just funny to see it happen because it doesn't usually happen at Super Rugby level. Um, Bowden Barrett's try later on. That was the two tries in the first half, one to Grosso, and then Bowden Barrett scored one for the All Blacks. Uh, pretty slick move from the All Blacks, like some good hands, running good lines, and um, yeah, just uh, some good work from the Barrett brothers to kind of link up together. The All Blacks had another one denied later on, Anton Leonard Brown. Uh, his one was called back because there was a bit of obstruction. That one seemed fair enough, so that was a kind of a, I don't even know if it was a 50-50 call, because the French did have some calls kind of go against them, but, but not that one anyway. At half time, the lead was 11 points to 8 to the French. Um, so yeah, it, it just made things a, a little bit more interesting. You'd still have to say the All Blacks are favourite going into the second half. Generally, just looking at the way they tend to run away with the last 20 minutes of games. But, um, you know, there was no guarantees. Position and territory, the All Blacks had about 60% in the first half. So kind of dominant in that area. But the French tackling was at 89%, which is very high. Uh, All Blacks were only down at 67, which is really, really poor. That's the kind of tackling we saw in the uh, the Waratahs Reds game the other day, where they were like 90 points scored. So uh, yeah, the French were definitely kind of holding up their own in the first half. Uh, their line speed was causing the ABs guys to make a few handling errors, but they were also getting pinged by the ref at points for offside. So it was kind of you know one of those 50-50 plays. Um, all Blacks turning down three points, which was interesting, especially when they were behind. End of the first half and the start of the second half, um, you know, went for touch, tried to go for seven and ended up with nothing. Uh, I think third time was the charm when they just decided to go for three. Uh, but then there was a big turning point in about the 50th minute. One of the French locks got yellow carded for a high shot. The ref didn't review it. He just kind of went purely on his initial impression and cruddy. Uh, his fall to ground was pretty dramatic, so it made it look a fair bit worse than it was. It was just an arm on the shoulder, so it's a high shot, but it wasn't like a clothes hanger kind of, you know, neck or head shot. It wasn't one of those really bad ones. Um, clothes line, not clothes hanger. Um, but yeah, it was a bit harsh. I think in most games that's just a penalty. Uh, but during that period of the yellow card, All Blacks go and see score 14 points. Momentum, you know, that, that's a shift from, I think, 11 all to 25-11, and the game's suddenly looking very different. French having to chase it down um, just causes them to kind of open up and, and to start falling off tackles. Uh, you know, Taylor scored one, Ben Smith scored one, two for Rico Ioane, Damien McKenzie got one, almost two. Uh, Lamapi got one where he busted through guys like nothing, and uh, Adi Savier got one at the end, which was also a bit questionable, seeing as it looked like his knee was on the ground. Um... But yeah, the floodgates just opened and the All Blacks ran away with the score. Uh, French couldn't really get back into the match from there. So um, yeah, it was uh, pretty good 50 minutes. And then 
just some some pretty poor defending from the French. I guess their heads kind of went down a bit, and um, it's harder to pick yourself up when you when you're really chasing the game. You know, there's there's probably not that much hope going on. I mean, their tackle percentage so good in the first half, 89, dropped down dropped down to the 80s uh, in the second half. So you'd have to imagine if 80 was the total for the whole game, it would have been in the 70s uh, for the second half. So pretty pretty poor. Um, I mean, there's a few interesting points. Bowden Barrett was not on form with the boot. He kicked at less than 50%, which is really poor. Admittedly, a lot of his kicks from the sideline. But I think like three of them in a row were from the same spot, and he just couldn't get it right. So that's the kind of thing that you hope in higher pressure games that it will get right. But I guess there wasn't that much pressure on uh, towards the end of this game. Uh, also, when the All Blacks brought their subs on, they didn't really... Um, they didn't try anything inventive. It was just straight swap. So Lamapi came on for Crotty. Uh, Damien McKenzie came on for Geordie Barrett. So it was just straight swaps. There wasn't any kind of experimentation with putting uh, Damien at 10 or, you know, Geordie in the centers or anything like that. It was just straight swaps. So I guess it's the first game the All Blacks wanted to put out what they thought was their strongest team. So uh, there was kind of less in the way of experimentation. Um... But yeah, like I said, they got some of the 50-50 calls with the yellow card and Savia's try when he looked tackled. Um, the French lineout was shocking, uh, 58%. That's Teams like the All Blacks are going to punish you if you can't win your own ball at lineout time, so uh, that is definitely something for them to work on. Uh, in the second half, they had uh, the All Blacks had about 70% of the position and 74% um, of the territory, so it was just... Um, yeah, definitely very one-sided in that second half. Uh, the the clean breaks, New Zealand 8, France 3, so that was the story of it. So uh, too many times the, the All Blacks guys were just able to bust straight through and uh, in for a try in, in pretty quick succession. So yeah, still, I mean, I guess some encouraging signs for the French, uh, if they can kind of keep it together for 80 minutes and keep that tackling rate high, uh, they could cause the All Blacks some problems. But your heart and your mind are not going to be in a great place after you've just been beaten 52 points to 11. So um, we'll see how they're able to pick themselves up after this one. We'll see if the All Blacks try uh, some new combinations or if they stick with a similar lineup for game number two. You'd have to think there's some changes coming at some point, but it may be game number three before they do that. So I guess uh, we will see. Uh, what did you guys think of the game? What do you think of the yellow card? I mean, that's obviously going to be a talking point, which is unfortunate, but it's just kind of the way it is. Um, any guys that you thought kind of performed especially well? Uh, any other guys you thought performed kind of poorly? And uh, yeah, just those thoughts on the game. Let me know, and um, we'll look forward for the next one, which I believe is Australia v. Ireland pretty soon. All right, guys, I'll talk to you again later. See ya.